Today I'm going to show you guys how to add a piece of corner bead where they've had to cut out a main corner in the house. We've got to add a section at the bottom here. Now, I'm going to show you guys how to do this with no coat. It's not the best idea in the world unless you have what they call a fast dry or quick set or sheet rock or, you know, it dries like cement. Not, uh, not, it doesn't dry like regular mud. Regular mud, mud it dries uh, a little bit uh, softer, easier to sand. Sheet rocks like a cement. So you see the big gap here. You gotta fill that up before you even think of putting tape on it. That's gotta be dry. You know, for the right, the right way to, 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 to finish something. The smoother your first coat is, the easier your next coat's gonna go. Okay, so I've already went ahead and added some screws. You know, I resecured it. Added a few screws because as you can see, there was a little crack going all the way up because of when they ripped it out, they were rough. So I added about six screws. And I've cut a piece of, it's a paper plastic bead. It's called no coat. You're gonna have to get that Blend it in here. So I've already went ahead and I've cut it to match up, as you can see. So next, we're gonna mix up some sheet rock in your mud pan with a six-inch knife. Sheet rock is what I like to use, and it's made by CGC. Sheet rock 20. It'll dry in 20 minutes. You like this? This could be your best friend, or it could be your worst enemy. If you're a good plasterer guy, sheet rock could be your best friend. If you don't know how what you're doing with it, you gotta be very careful because it's hard to sand. All right, so that's there. We're gonna uh, mix up some sheet rock, and I'll get right back to you when we're uh, mudding and uh, plastering it up. Now, when mixing your sheet rock, you're gonna want some cold water. You don't want hot because it uh, tends to activate the sheet rock quicker and it will get harder faster if you use warmer water. So what I've uh, noticed over the years. And uh, so you use your, your cold water. You're gonna wanna add your water first. So right now we only need a little bit because we don't uh, have much plastering to do. We just wanna put that bead on and fill the gap. So we're gonna add our water. A little bit, Let's say about an eighth of that pad. Take the sheet rock, sheet rock running. Sprinkle it in nice. Okay. I like to cover up the water. You don't see water, you don't want to put too, too much. It's just enough to get rid of the, look, the water. I'm going to mix that up a bit. It's easier to mix it as it's wet, get it mixed, and slowly work it into a uh, mud. Okay, so as you can see, it's still soupy, very soupy, but nothing sticking on the bottom. No dry powder. Add a little bit more. And this should be the final touch. And as you mix, you may have to add a little more water if you uh, put a bit too much powder. This I might have put a bit too much. You want to chop at it. Make sure it's all mixed in good. You don't want to be coating and having blotches of powder in your coat. I'm gonna add a tiny little bit more water. It's a little bit stiff, just a tad. That's it. Mix that up. Twirl it up. You know, if you have a big joint to do, you can always mix a. Uh, say a quarter of a pail of this. If you've got a few joints and you want to rush rush the job, you can you can do miracles with this. I've done full bathroom jobs with pure sheetrock 20. 
right to skim coat and they've come out beautiful. I do not recommend it. Okay. So you want to twist that up. Twist that up. Work it into a nice mud. Okay. You try to keep the sides of your pan clean with this stuff. Because once it starts to get tacky, it'll contaminate your whole batch of still wet mud. Because the thinner the coat is, the faster it'll dry, right? If your walls of your mud pan are coated with a thin layer, they'll get tacky fast. And you don't want that. All right, so there's your mud. All right. So, I showed you in the beginning, there's a gap here. You want that full. Take your mud, scoop the edges off each end of your side, side of your knife. Boom, you see? That's what you want. You want to take that and you want to fill up your gap. So that, nice and easy. So, make sure that gap's full. Give another shot over top again, just to really push that mud in there. Make sure she's filled. Set, wipe, flatten your knife. 45 degree angle about. Get that mud away. You see the edges here? There's a thick edge. Run that in. You want to want to scrape down that edge. You give yourself less hassle. Give it a little angle, a little round into into the coat that's already there. And that's going to help you. Trust me. Okay. Okay. Now. This side too, there's a little bit. I cut that down a bit. All right. Take out any loose, loose mud chips that are still on the bead. We're gonna fill that up anyway. Now, as you can see, this I gotta cut my paper here because there's trim here. You want to make that right to the trim. So I've cut it on an angle here to follow the stairway up. So you follow the, the cut up towards the trim here. You cut it flush here. You can even use your little drywall knife. Do a little slice. That's it. Okay, bang. Follow through. They can caulk that gap there. Now, so as you see, the bead's here. So we got to float it out to the point of this trim to blend that in beautiful. And we also need to get, need to watch the space between here. If you re really want to get technical, you get a measuring tape and you measure, bang, bang. You make sure your measurements are on. Three measurements, bang, bang, bang. Make sure, but I like to go by eye. Uh, don't waste the time when I don't have it, right? So, that's there. Make sure it's all lined up good. Take it off and get your mud in there. And remember, you got to work quick because this will dry in 20 minutes. That little creature. Give it a little pre coat up here where it's very bad for your next coat. Remember, you can do three, four coats, ten coats if you want for sheetrock. But we like to keep it in uh, under three coats for sure. No mind to make if you do it. So we're going to want to fill this up. Bang. To get that right fill. You almost want to build yourself that corner that you want before you put this plastic beading on. You want to put that mud, you want to fill that right up. It's a little trickier here when it's trimming away, but you master things like this, and a wall is a piece of cake. All right, so we got a lot of mud in here. in the world like this, but it doesn't matter because once your mud's in, see we fill the gap, fill it up. Looks a little crappy, don't worry about that. You get your bead in here. You keep it floated out. And this is the critical part where you always make sure your points are lined up. That's one thing I can't stand is when you go and do a job and the bead guys have laid points 
over, a, over sometimes it's almost a, a quarter inch off, a half inch off, and you say, how am I supposed to blend that in? But you do it anyways. You do it because you're paid to do it. It's extra time. <laughs> All right. Okay. Show you how that lined up. There's your corner. Okay. Make sure everything is lined up beautiful. You can use a laser if you want. Would be the best thing to do. So you don't wipe anything yet until you know that that is where you want it. Okay. Pulling the tape out. Pulling the tape from halfway down, out, and halfway up, out. That prevents crinkling and problems that you don't need. Once your wife, you want to make sure that that is lined up A1. That's well. Let's see if it falls in a bit up here. If I leave it like that, that's going to be a problem to hide. It's going to be more work. Which we want to avoid. to hide it for now. As you can see, you can almost pass that on one tool. Because if you know how to drive your knife, you don't let it drive you. You gotta drive it. But once you learn how to take control of the wrist and the hand movement on the knife, you can hide anything. first coat tape uh, the joint not taped yet fill that up we're gonna let that dry but you can always tape right over top of the bead there's a connection there anyways so I'll put a piece of tape right up to the corner there right up to the corner there if you have to adjust it you adjust it right now now's the time you adjust it now because once that dries, that's your angle. So you fill that up now, you put your tape after. It's no biggie. A lot of people will say tape first, yeah, then you coat over top. Well, just watch, boys and girls, we're gonna get this done. And done uh, A1. No playing around. We're dealing with uh, people's people's hard-earned money, life savings going into down payments on these houses. So my name's involved and I want my name clean and good. You know, I want it to... All right, so we give that 20 minutes. We let her dry up. Uh, we'll give her another, uh, we'll give it a tape. We'll coat the tape and the joint and everything again with sheet rock. Then we'll give it a final uh, skim with regular mud. Should be beautiful. So while we're waiting for that to dry, we'll go ahead and uh, walk the house because we're doing a prime, what they call a prime check today. I got a little bit extra sheet rock, so it's going to be dry very soon, but things like this, bigger holes that are going to need uh, two coats. You fill that now with a bit of sheet rock. Yeah. 
Feel that now, nice teardrop. Remember the square patch in the bowl. Nice teardrops or uh, straight up lines. They say more sanding. I've sanded all my jaws in the past 11 years. Nail strips are the way to go. You don't want to spot sand. It's harder on the arms. If you have a smooth glide across a, a straight long nail, nail like this, you know, something like that. That's gonna sand a hundred times better than any spot nail. Like I said, we go around, check any of the bigger spots that may need two coats. Quick run upstairs. Have a quick look, bang, bang, there's a hole. That's good, there's another hole. Bad plug. Alright, I'm not going off into this for right now. I was just giving you a bit of show on what I do in the next 20 minutes. While I'm waiting for my color to be dry. Other than when I'm going for coffee. Go for coffee. sheet rock. So I've just rinsed out my mud pan because this is sheet rock or quick set or whatever you're using and this will contaminate your next mud pan that you mix up by leaving chunks in your mud. That's uh, Taper's worst. Uh, you know Taper doesn't like that. Drywall finisher doesn't want chunks in his mud. You rinse that out, you dump this water, you don't use that. It's poison now. Alright, so once your mud's mixed, not too, too soupy, but just so it rolls off your knife. Clean up your little bits of mud that might get chunky. tape this joint. We're going to cut our tape about quarter inch before this edge. This is drywall tape. Piece is like this. Piece. This is the bad piece. You don't want to lay your tape like this. This is not how you lay tape. You lay tape like this so it sits into the joint or the crevice that you're laying. 
want to cut your tape on the angle of the trim so it's nicely blended in. Just tear it away. Like Have yourself an angle. If it's not perfectly straight, you can always do it at a. There you go. Okay. That goes there. You want to lay this line directly in the middle of this crevice. Okay, so the tape's going to be cut right about there. Okay. okay. I'll lay that just like that. Mud. So that the joint is in the middle of your knife. So even if you can't see the joint, you're putting your tape directly in the middle of what you've laid for mud. So you know that your tape is being laid properly. 45 angle, push hard enough to get the tape wiped as flat as possible. Roll up, because this is a weird angle, you wanna roll up. All right, come back down. Something not many people do is I like to put another coat over top just before I do any other work. Don't want that to happen. Coat over top so it's as smooth as possible. Next, we're going to be coating it. You're going to need yourself a knife like this. I prefer a 12 inch knife for everything. This is all I use, six and a 12. Mind you, I use the corner angle applicator, mud applicator for corners. All right. Same idea. I'm gonna grab a nice even scoop. Take your corners away so you're not putting mud everywhere. Go with the angle of the stairs. Hold up. Nice and symmetrical. Yeah. We got this little baby under here we gotta get. Yes. Put a little shot like that. Remember we're watching this bottom angle here because you want that square and straight. Nice wipe from the side. Your edges. Just a little bit of tape there, so we put a bit more mud. Go with the edge of the stairs and wipe up. Here's our first coat. Pretty much. Get the same on the other side here. Really watch how you put the mud because you don't want 
what I just made, made a mistake on is I should have loaded both sides of the bead at the same time, then wiped. So now I'm going to be really careful that I'm not screwing with the corner. So that's first coat. Okay, and you can see you can almost sand it like that, but you got imperfections like these little bubbles here at the bottom. I'm not going to wipe all my mud away, so I'll, those little bubbles will be filled on the last coat. Sorry, I should say this is the second coat. We're going to do a last third coat, and no problems. Everything. A1. So for the second time, we're going to clean our mud pan. Because the next step is adding regular mud. We'll be using regular mud. We're giving it that 20 minute dry. We do a few other things in the unit. We'll have a nice clean mud pan to load. We're going to be using some beige regular mud, drywall mud, plaster, whatever you want to call it. Give this a good clean because you don't want this uh, getting into your regular mud. Again, for chunks and whatnot. Deficiencies you don't want. Okay, get back to you guys in about 20 minutes. Okay, I've added a, a light. For skim coat, it's best if you use a light. You want it uh, pretty much perfect now. This is your last coat, coat to make it nice. Take a 12 inch knife. I'll have my 6 inch once again. I'm going to lightly give it a little rub, almost with your knife flat, not too much pressure. Just to get a little smoothness, get rid of any little bits of the uh, sheet rock 20. Alright. Got our 12 inch knife. We scraped it for any loose loose bits of mud or anything that's gonna make lines in our mud. Now we're gonna take a nice even scoop, pinch your corners, get rid of a little bit of that excess on the corners. Nice, some 
pressure cook swipes. Before I said I should have loaded both sides of my water bead at the same time before I even started wiping. Okay, remove the excess lightly, very lightly, wipe up the edges at almost a flat position. If you go a little bit too much, you'll rip right into your corner you've been building. We're rolling it, rolling, okay, you have a nice review, wipe your edges, push your pressure, okay, feathering the edge, pushing pressure, the top, Comment, let me know what you think.